The whole debate around whether or not canceling student debt is fair actually reveals a much larger problem with U.S. culture. And that's that we've been conditioned to believe that life in the U.S. should be hard. It should be difficult. And that is somehow a good thing. Hi, it's Alonzo Bowden with another Rebel HQ TYT video. And um, brainwashed to believe you have to struggle to live. The man makes some good points. I will give you that. The man definitely makes some good points. No, our government does not provide health care or higher education or housing or, or much assistance to anyone. And that's okay. I mean, he's comparing us to socialist countries that charge a lot more in taxes to provide for their citizens. Our country only charges more in taxes so that the rich don't have to pay taxes. And therein lies the real joke in this struggle to survive. The people telling you to struggle are the people who struggle the least, the people who have privilege built in, the people who have inherited wealth. They're the ones telling you, work hard, pull yourself up by your bootstraps, we'll sit over here and inherit money. You know, I don't think the problem is that you have to work hard to make it. I think the problem is that you're working hard against a stacked deck. That's right. It's not the struggle. It's that the struggle isn't fair. Like I've seen so many people online be like, canceling student debt is unfair. And then they will go on to describe their shitty life in the U.S. as if that's how things should be. This country doesn't provide higher education. It doesn't provide health care, housing, paid family leave, and a number of other things that other wealthy nations give to its citizens. I believe this idea of working hard in the American dream it goes back to the founding of this country. And one of the big differences was we didn't have a class system. Now, when I say we, I'm going to go with Americans. Being a black American is a unique experience, and I'll touch on that. But I'll just say the United States didn't have a class system that many other countries had. And if you were in a class system, you couldn't work your way up. If you were born a peasant, you were going to die a peasant. If you were born a laborer, you were going to die a laborer. America offered the dream of working your way up. You could be born a peasant and then maybe become a merchant and strike it big. Or you might have a unique talent that you could sell that would allow you to move up. And America had something nowhere else in the world had. It had a middle class. That's right. Everywhere else had the super rich and the super poor. It's starting to sound familiar? Just saying. America had the middle class where you could get a house and a car and clean running water and public education for your kids and all these things that other countries didn't have. And that was the American dream. Then it's sold back to us like it's actually good that you don't have things because then you get the chance to work for them. You get the privilege of getting to struggle to survive in the U.S. And you better be grateful for that opportunity because that's what freedom costs. And people just, they just and eat that up. That's why immigrants believe our streets were paved with gold because you could achieve things in the United States that you couldn't in other countries. And this was a time before they were really thinking about things like health care or higher education. Just the fact you could get a job and get a house and all of those things were great. And immigrants thought they were fantastic. But then the truth started coming out. Now, as a black person, I can tell you that we knew from the start the deck was stacked against you because it was certainly stacked against us. But everyone else found out mm, that American dream isn't as open as you think. It is if you're white, if it is if you have European ancestry, but if you're brown or, or Asian or something else that's different, that American dream became a little bit more tough. And now, now times have changed and we're actually working backwards. That's right. We are working backwards. We are getting a class system. And the American middle class, hmm, I give it about 50 years. Think about that for a second. The wealthiest nation in the history of humanity has successfully convinced like a decent percentage of its people that life should be hard, you're not going to get any help, and you don't deserve any help. And you know what? That's a good country. So it only took 400 years to develop that class system we wanted to get away from. That's right. The middle class is going away. We're going to have rich and we're going to have poor. There was a time when the boss made 30 times what the average worker made. Now the CEO makes 300 times what the average worker makes. And we have a class of billionaires, the ruling class, that has bought and paid for our government and made sure that they get their way and we don't get ours. 
Oh, and that hardworking middle America white man, the guy who is so upset and so resentful that he's not making the American dream and he's mad at the immigrants, he's mad at the black people. No, my friend, it is white people much richer than you that are keeping you down. So yeah, this man has a legitimate beef. They, the, the, they've been sold a bill of goods. Work hard and you'll get ahead if you're lucky, if you're connected, if you know the right people, if you get a break. Otherwise, you're just going to be working hard to work hard. Student debt, health care, all of these burdens put on you. Unions used to help, but they convinced you to get rid of those. So I don't know. I don't know what's next, but the deck seems to be stacked against you. So here's the bad news to the letter generations, the X, Ys, and Zs, the ones that the, they're yelling at saying, why can't you buy a house when you can barely pay your rent? The ones that are they're mad at because you've been forgiven $10,000 of possibly hundreds of thousand dollars in debt, whereas they've been forgiven for PPP loans and a bad mortgage scam in the early 2000s and the Wall Street bailout and the bank bailouts and, the, and so on, proving once again the true American way. If you steal $100, you're going to jail. But if you steal $100 million, chances are you'll meet the president. I honestly wish you luck. And when they show you those great American dreams, the ones that made it, show them the book by Malcolm Gladwell called Outliers that shows even the self-made weren't really self-made. I'm not saying give up. Hang in there. Keep working hard. Try to make this a better country. That's what we really need. And as much as I love the boomer generation and I'm on the, the very outskirts of the boomer generation, we blew it. Do better. Good luck.